Okay, today I've got a resource for you that is really valuable. I was looking up some of the origins of it today and found that it was founded in 2006. And I remembered back and realized that I must have found it not very much uh, after it was actually originally formed. And then I went back to it. It was reformatted in 2010. And so when I went back to it again later, I realized it looked different. And I wanted to make sure I was in the same place because it actually was launched in 2006. I probably found, found it in 2008-ish, 2009. In 2010, it had a new look. <clears throat> I found it because I was trying to find some old original documents and I just searched and searched and searched and then I found openlibrary.org. It was actually founded by Aaron Schwartz and uh, through the nonprofit organization Internet Archive and I haven't done extensive research. I don't know if he worked for them and it was a project of that organization or if he kind of uh, you know, headed it up. I, I don't know exactly. But the California State Library uh, was a huge financial contributor, so it was probably started in the state of California. <clears throat> and their slogan is, one web page for every book. But the reason Open Library is so cool is because they're, they claim to have um, information on, I think they said 6 million authors and 20 million books. And they also have like a million resources for hearing impaired or for like if you have a reading problem like, um, oh, what's it called? Um, I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, so they have resources for that as well. And I've got this on my mobile and I don't know how well you can see it, but this is kind of, this is their little slogan, if you can see what that looks like. And, um, I've got this open, I just went in today and I had done a post on Leo Tolstoy recently and I didn't realize that you could search by author, I'd never tried to do that and I didn't know if they had a large biography section that was just extensive biographies on authors but I can't seem to find that although if there was an auth a book written by, written uh, a book written about an author then I'm sure they have it. So. Um, you're not, it's not going to be a good biography source. There's other sources that I'll give you for that. It's just going to be book source. So biography as a book, uh, it's going to be a really good source for that. So all you do is you go in to the search and you search anything. And this is, I fell in love with it because I found, um, the first thing I ever found that was really valuable to me on Open Library, one of my very favorite readings, which I don't think I've blogged on yet, but anyway, I was looking for John and Abigail's letters, John and Abigail Adams' letters, and I found a book that was um, originally published by their son of their letters. And in the second edition, the son included, the son was, um, it was a grandson actually, excuse me, and he was John Quincy's son. And so he published a set of letters that John Quincy wrote to his son when John Quincy was living in Russia and his son was about 10 years old in the States and he put that in the appendix and I fell in love with those letters. And I'll blog on those another time, but they're absolutely fantastic. Um, anyway, so it just, I mean, you could search around on it forever. Again, this is the knowledge age. We have unlimited amounts of information at our fingertips. And so we want to know, you know, we want to become discerning in what we're looking for and what's going to be valuable for us for us to read. But I went in and put in Leo Tolstoy 1,279 works <laughs> for Leo Tolstoy in openlibrary.org. Really, there's going to be anything you want. And there's lots and lots of versions of different books. Most of the time, my experience at Open Library has been that they're scanned books. So it can be hard to copy the information and put it somewhere else because it's a picture of a page, it's not text. Um, if you want just text, gutenberg.org does uh, text better. If you want to copy the text and put it somewhere, it's a lot easier to use Gutenberg for that. If you just want to read it, and, and the really nice thing too is that Open Library will allow you to flip through the book to the table of contents or whatever, and so if like there's a certain chapter that you're looking for of something, then you can just type in the page number and it'll take you right to the page that you need. So 
you don't have to scroll through um, a whole document, which, you know, Gutenberg has its good things and Open Library has its good things. That's a really nice thing about Open Library. You can just, there's also a bar on the bottom. You can just skim back and forth. And you can also, I don't know if you have to become a member. I've never done it before. But you can contribute. Because it's nonprofit, like Gutenberg. You can volunteer for Gutenberg. You can um, go, you can log in and then you can add a book to Open Library. And if they're more modern reads, I was noticing that they, they have some of those that you can check out, just like you would check them out of your library. If they're still um, under copyright, then you can check them out for two weeks and then, then you give them back. And so you can just search around and see anything on there that you might want to read. Now, I love hard copies of everything that I'm reading. So when I find something I'm in love with, I'll usually print it off. Now, I wouldn't print off a whole book. Um, from Open Library, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you read a whole book through Gutenberg or through Open Library. The way I use these resources is that I go in and search and find out what I want to purchase. That's why they're so valuable, because you can search through everything. You can read as much as you need to. You can, you can really experience the information that's there and then decide, I need to go find a copy of this. But then, you know, sometimes it might be out of print, or um, there might not, you might not be able to find a copy of it, and so you can get a copy of it here. So it's just really super fantastic, and there's lots of ways that you could use it. And you know, if you have more ways that you use Open Library or have more questions about it, post them here. You know, comment here and and let me know. We can share that information with others. So when you get on there, I'm going to show you. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on my, probably should have brought my iPad in. But anyway, on my phone, so it's just got, it's got the book listed there. I don't know if you can see that. So it has the book listed there and then see this little tiny, um, I'll zoom in even more for you. It has a little picture of a book and it says read below it. So on anything that you look up, if you see that little read next to it, then you can click on it. I just, when I was looking at that, I clicked on short stories. So it loaded up short stories for me. It says read, because you can read it right online. They have it available for you right here. And you go right into it. And then they'll also have them in foreign languages. They have this one in Ukrainian. Um, and so, and, and you'll find, you'll find things that are like his original writings, but then you'll find things that are related to him and biographies and things that, people wrote on what he wrote and so you can just search and en endlessly but um it's a really such a cool thing and so 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 convenient for finding out quick information about is that really something that's going to be valuable that i'm going to want to own or and really read and really sink my th teeth into and and we talk more about what criteria to look for and how to go about that process in the video trainings but but for our purposes here this is an exhaustible resource for researching virtually anything uh, in book form. And lots of older documents, lost documents. I mean, that book that I found on John and Abigail's letters, there's all kinds of modern copies of that book. But because I went to the original, it had that original appendix that hasn't been included <coughs> in subsequent copies of that book. And so... I don't know, I just loved it. I'm so grateful that I found it. So, this is openlibrary.org. And when you, the, also one last thing, when you, when you actually go in and want to read a specific reading, the screen's going to look a bit different. It's, it goes into a different URL that's like online something, and you're not in the wrong place. It's just part of Open Library, and that's what I found originally. And then somehow they, they linked it all in or something. I kind of went in the back way. But, um, and then, then that's when the book will open up and you can turn the pages and you can have the scroll bar where you can go to different pages that you want to look at. So this is openlibrary.org. I hope that's a helpful resource. I hope you'll use it and look lots of good things up and tell me what you find that's super great that other people should know about. Um, if this has been helpful, please pass it on to a friend and like us and stay in touch, comment and share all the things that you're finding on Open Library that have been helpful to you. And we will see you next time.